Hey there, what's going on everybody? Thank you for joining us today on Cinema Recap. Glad to have you here as always. So today we'll smack a recap on The Last Warrior. Spoilers ahead. Ah beautiful forest scenery. Everything seeming nice, but only for a moment. It's this. Men on horses with bow and arrow. Ah. Uh, did that man just chop down an entire tree with his sword? Alright. Oh, there's an owl? Wait, what just happened? Now the owl knocked the man off his horse. Well, this guy seems to have super strength. This fight scene is full of pretty unbelievable perfect stunts. We got flinging helmets off to take out an enemy to punching a hole through a shield and catching an arrow in midair. Yeah, I know these feats aren't impossible, but okay. And he threw the arrow back at the guy, piercing him in the butt. I see. The owl's really a woman. Fancy. She turned his sword into rubber. And the horse is really an old man. Oh, there's a lot happening here. Why does he keep sneezing? The witchy owl lady must not have liked hearing it. Man, I'd hate to annoy her. Getting turned to stone for a few sneezes. It's a little harsh. Oh, well, that's telling. His mentor took a brief moment of distraction and jumped off the cliff where the owl woman's goons were about to toss the last warrior. As that old man hit the water, he became a fish. Convenient. Huh. Wonder if any of those guys were also the last warrior. Maybe she says that every time. So, now we're in modern time. A handsome guy with a black robe and large sun amulet around his neck walks onto the set of a show or a movie. What about attire? What is going on? An announcer brings him on and introduces him as a past contestant named Svetazar, the wizard. In true trophy fashion, the guy is an orphan and has a pure heart. That's original. He casually and without any kind of prior knowledge at all, totally found what he was supposed to. Hmm, nice necklace. Man, really pays to be a cheater. Suddenly, a babushka emerges from the shadows to deliver a creepy and completely unsolicited foretelling of his future. Ominous? And maybe foreshadowing? What is this voice he does? Nice fortune. I'm sure she already has nine cats. Apparently, our magician here, Svetazar, is named Ivan. His housekeeper, Galena, already knows how much of a scammer he is, but at least she gets paid. Judging from all the giant pictures of himself, I'd say Ivan really, really likes his own image. Galena makes a joke that he'll never get married, but he says he will once the competition's over. Ain't that the truth? Our sun god worshipping Svetazar the Wizard, aka Ivan, is at work again, this time using his magical cleansing abilities on a wealthy woman. But something's keeping him from completing his work. Oh, well, here's our guy's opportunity to use his influence. Bring on the cool music with the witchcraft, baby. Ivan pulls out all the stops. He draws sigils on paper, lays out some crystals, drips candle wax, and uses a lock of the wife's hair. Not to mention fire. Who knew witchcraft could be so lucrative? So he can help out desperate housewives, but what about dying children? Dang, that's D, buddy. Most con artists would probably shy away from this type of thing, but not Sveto. Ah, never mind. Yeah, he realized it's not his forte. Svetozar's a wizard. Not a doctor, but my man's looking cool with that white doctor's code and dramatic music. Time for a super prolific flashback to Svetozar's childhood. Wow, I guess he really was an orphan. And that wasn't just for a sad background. I'm a little surprised by this. Looks like Ivan suffered some bullying, but I guess he was doomed to that when he wore that pointed wizard's hat all the time. Svetozar managed to pick his way out of a closet his bullies locked him in, using a big freaking needle and sew the little jerk's bedsheets to their mattresses. Pretty clever, really. I totally thought he was going to do something worse, but then I remembered that, you know, it's a Disney movie. He's kept that needle in some resin and wears it as a super cool necklace. Yeah, there's no way that's not foreshadowing. Ivan's just trying to enjoy his lunch at the mall when some suspicious and angry looking guys approach him. Hey, the hand on the shoulder's a little aggressive. Maybe he's in some trouble. Oh yeah, time to run. Apparently, there's also a water park at the mall and the men pursuing him are wearing dress shoes. Ivan thinks for some reason, let's run up to this water slide and go down it to escape these dudes. Wouldn't have been my first choice for escape, but at least this water slide turned out to be a portal into another dimension or something. Hey, hey, it's the guy from the beginning. Ivan didn't appreciate his introduction though. Well, Ivan's pretty confused. So are we, but at least we know who that bearded guy kinda is. And he knows who Ivan is too. <laughs> Trying to rationalize what just happened seems like the right thing to do, but it gets him nowhere. I'm not really familiar with Russian fairy tales, but I think that's some kind of lore. Probably shouldn't have said that. Ivan's keeping his cool pretty well for what's going on. Funny enough, he seems pretty mad for a guy who admires himself as Svetozar the Wizard. You'd think he'd be in his element. And apparently, he's from this land anyways. At least according to his new wizard godfather. He says that he took Ivan to another world and left him in a tree hollow where the humans found him. Couldn't have dropped him off at an orphanage like most people. Okay, even Harry Potter was left on a doorstep. Come on. Wizard godfather hands over 
over a ring, saying that it was Ivan's father's. Suddenly, an arrow flies out of nowhere and hits that old guy in the back. That sucks. Who's gonna teach our main character the ropes? At least most of the time, though, the wizard godfather doesn't die until the end. Too bad for Ivan, he's not a good fighter. Ivan is brought to some guy who spends his free time throwing swords and axes at a shield for fun. <laughs> Huh, nice shot. This Vikings meets Game of Thrones character immediately recognized Ivan's father's ring, setting him free. Glad to see that dad still has some influence at least. It seems like Ivan still hasn't entirely grasped that he's not in Kansas anymore. Our Robert Baratheon look-alike, Dabrina, has a pretty wife. Pretty familiar, that is. She looks strangely similar to the lady who killed Ivan's pops, Ilya, at the beginning of the movie. Her husband seemed friendly enough, but she clearly has other plans. <laughs> Here he meets a new friend, a very strange friend to say the least. Uh, I'd say this guy's having a worse day than you are, Ivan. Oh, this guy's hardcore. You know, for a wizard, Ivan sure's having a tough time grasping the concept of magic. His dismembered and frozen new buddy introduces himself as Kashki. Huh, well, that explains how he's chopped into pieces and still talking. Kashki knows who Ivan is. Apparently, he's already famous, and he just got there. Dad's reputation was something really impressive. Too bad he died sneezing. About time he got a proper welcome. Finally, Ivan lets everything sink in. No, Ivan? I'm glad you finally figured it out. The rabbit hole you fell down was definitely real. Since we're talking about fairy tales now, I'm not surprised to see Baba Yaga make her entrance. She seems a little too eager to be searched by the guards, even offering them her frog jerky. Aw, oh, how thoughtful. Ivan is still having doubts, thinking back to the fun times at the water slide, when he shoved a big bear-like man aside. Maybe he's who's really supposed to be summoned here. It's a good thought, but Koshki says otherwise. And I'd assume a dude who's immortal would probably know best. Baba Yaga doesn't really like her treatment, but still enjoys teasing the guards. Not really sure if she wants to eat them or do something else. Koshki mentions that there's a sort of power that Ivan could use to help him, but that he only knows its location. Come on, I feel a flashback coming. With a cool, illustrative perspective, the guy describes how a young, dumb, would-be wizard killed his mentor and stole a powerful sword, accidentally embedding his own death into it and then becoming immortal. He says he's the only person who knows its whereabouts, but unfortunately, Ivan will probably not make it to sunrise. Oh, well, if good is in Belagoria, then it looks like Ivan can go back home. Apparently not. He must to know about the Varvara Queen Lady, because she's certainly up to no good, in case he hasn't noticed. Speaking of up to no good, what's Baba Yaga doing? A frog turned into an attractive young woman. I guess she's the witch's familiar. At least she's better looking than her master. She drugs the big dumb guard and quickly releases Baba Yaga. Her and Koshki are working together from the looks of everything. He's also looking much better after he's been thawed out and put back together. Ivan's lucky that Koshki actually liked him. I guess being brought along for potential usefulness is better than dying, so, you know, it works out for him. Too bad for them, Ivan's a stupid modern human, and he's obsessed with his modern day things. Eh, and they were just about to get out of there. Was grabbing the phone and ring worth it now, Ivan? The pretty familiar's also a convenient badass and can handle herself well. Remember, Ivan's a terrible fighter. Why do you even try? Much like most immortal characters from movies, Koshki will be stabbed and maimed a thousand times because he simply can be, and he won't die. Let's not forget about dismembering. Now he's got a hand crawling around like Adam's family. Just stop trying to help, Ivan. It's not going well for you. Uh-oh, the big guy's awake again. Ivan finally found a way to be resourceful. My man, Ivan gets a win. Ouch, until he has to rip off his own tail. Our weird quartet makes their way, somewhere, in a hut with legs. What in the Disney's going on? Actually, it's a pretty sick ride. Aw, poor chicken hut thing. Varvara turned into an owl again. Only this time, Baba Yaga wasn't playing games. The next day, Dobrynya Baratheon's told by his wife that Ivan set Koshki and Baba Yaga free. How he hasn't seen through this lady is already beyond me. Meanwhile, Ivan and the others are somewhere in the forest, and he stupidly sets the poor chicken hut on fire. He's lucky that Koshki didn't let Baba Yaga eat him after that. Ivan has flashbacks to the old babushka lady that he met earlier. Remember her fortune? Ivan has the worst luck and the best luck at the same time. Unlucky that everything happening to him is pretty terrible, but also lucky that he gets his butt saved every time. Being the son of Ilya is working out well for him. Hopefully someone teaches him how to use the magic sword. Baba Yaga's not his biggest fan. With some interesting motivational music, the Force set out on foot. Well, Baba Yaga's got a weird floating barrel she's riding like a magic carpet. The young woman, still assuming she's a familiar, doesn't say much, but has managed to catch Ivan's eye. I don't think she's interested. Ivan continues to make a fool of himself by trying to pick carnivorous flowers or running like he's jogging awkwardly through a crowd. Is that supposed to impress her? Turns out they all have a sense of humor and take a break for fun with a little photo session. 
Their next plan is to cross the Death River. Ominous. They use the pretty familiar, have they even said her name yet? I don't know. To lure the keeper of the swamps to him. He's called the Merman, but he knew right away that she wasn't a normal human. Well, if she wasn't to his liking, then maybe Baba Yaga will do. Only if she eats an apple of youth first. Ooh, Baba Yaga doesn't look too bad when she's not a decrepit old woman. They go with the name Martha, because it's just so sexy, obviously. Koshki needs to command water so that they can get across the Death River, or something like that. He had to ride in Baba's big barrel of fun, and it has to be full of water. How hard can that be? Well, the Owl Queen's on her way and decided to make her own little seafood boil out of the merman's home. Think of all the creatures. She makes some fancy blue arrow out of magic and shoots it into the air. Wonder where it's gonna land. Koshki's dismembering of himself could be considered a superpower at this point. Next stop, time to recruit another fairy tale creature. Some big monster guy who has a giant spoon. I guess he doesn't take kindly to strangers. After all that spoon smashing, Ivan threw out a grand idea of trying to talk to the guy. Yeah, Ivan, just, uh, you know, go talk to him. Just like those skeletons try to. Meanwhile, the merman's over there dying on the floor because he doesn't have water. <sighs> So needy. Clever Ivan actually realizes something. The monster is not a guy at all, but a girl. Time for a Rick roll. Finally, our boy proves that he's worth something. Baba Yaga's impressed, but might still eat him. They manage to make their way to the Death River in time for the merman to get attacked by the fish in the river. Koshki and Baba Yaga argue over things not going as planned. Did they really think it'd be easy? Turns out Varvara couldn't work her magic, even with the fishes. She's also a jealous woman. We find out that the young familiar was originally a human that was turned into a frog along with her entire family, because Dobrynya noticed her one day when passing her village. Ah, we can finally call her Vasilisa. If they manage to vanquish the evil Varvara, then the curse will be lifted. Ivan and Vasilisa were enjoying some quiet time together when he found a super cute rabbit. Did he say kawaii? That's a little cringy, Ivan. Holy sh**. She just hit the rabbit with a stick. Oh, never mind. Well, Varvara needs to stop disguising herself as cute animals. In the midst of being chased by a witch and her soldiers, let's just go down a well with a merman, another witch, a frog, and a dead man. What could go wrong? Too bad for them. This revealed that Baba Yaga was indeed not a young mute woman named Martha. In a valiant moment, the merman sucked up all the water in the well so that the other three can make their way through the only exit. Ivan gives a great speech about not leaving any man behind, but needless to say, merman wouldn't fit. They escape, but he meets his doom. Not before he manages to soak the evil witch like she was in a splash zone at the zoo. More trekking through the woods again. Mortal people are so ungrateful, that is, until they're stuck under a rock. For a guy that has a crush on a girl, I don't know why he'd make fun of her frog disability. Honestly, not real smooth, but he can keep on trying. He decides to let her wear his necklace, calling it his good luck charm. Alright, we're improving. He tells her he doesn't think that he's Ilya's son. Still going with that theory, huh, Ivan? It was the fat guy in front of you at the water slide, right? Koshki comes and tells them that it's bedtime, like he's their dad. And the next day, it looks as if Ivan's about to go off on his own. Not sure what he thought he would accomplish with that. He's literally won zero fights the entire time he's been in Belagoria. I guess he did win the dancing Rickroll battle with the giant maiden monster, but come on, still. Point proven immediately. Barbara and her men surrounding him before he even realized they were there. Apparently, our man has also zero awareness. Worst wizard ever. Really, just one punch, all it took. Koshki and Baba, Vasilisa saved with the necklace. I guess it really is a good luck charm. The more I look at Varvara, I can't help but think she looks like, come on, somebody. I'm feeling, I'm feeling Kill Bill vibes. They lead Ivan and his team to a creepy graveyard of swords and just assume that he'll find it right away. Those were Ooh, sassy. There are hundreds of swords. How's he supposed to know which one it is? The ugly rusted one? Oh, that's not good. All right, lady, your stupid blue tentacles are really annoying. Well, that's one way to handle it. So Ivan found it after all. And he didn't die either. So the fat guy at the water slide wasn't Ilya's son. The Russian Excalibur has finally been found. And now the curse is lifted. Dobrynya randomly shows up. Tisk tisking Ivan for plotting with evil forces. So now it's his turn to tell Belagoria's Robert Baratheon that his wife is really the traitor. What's this? Dobrynya knew that his wife was doing that the whole time? And Koshki was in on it? I'll be you TF, dudes. Great. Ivan did all that work, and now the bad guys have the sword. It seems that Koshki wanted his death back. Typical immortal move. Man, double crossing going on everywhere. Koshki's stone was a fake, and shockingly, they tricked him. That's when Vasilisa makes her play, jumping like Frogger onto Dobrynya. <laughs> oh, snap. Ivan finally hit somebody, and in a somewhat shocking turn of events, Ivan completely wussed out and ran. Also, how do you know how to do that? And like an angry ex-girlfriend, 
she chucks that good luck charm through the portal. Shows him for leaving like that. There's no way anyone saw that. Yeah, act casual. Ivan feels pretty bad for leaving the others, as he should, but he gets a call. The magic competition is filming tonight. No, Ivan finally realizes what he has to do. It's water slide time, baby. Yeah, you just look stupid. And now you're in Water Park Mall Jail. Oh, what's this? Is that the weird old dude from the beginning? Turns out his name is Fedazar the Wizard too. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. Svetazar needs his staff, and for some reason the guard gives it to him. Someone's getting fired. Ivan has to go see a dragon. That's not as big as you'd imagine at first. Too bad Ivan got caught again. Always messing up. Looks like our other three are doomed to be beheaded or something potentially sacrificial. is trying to undergo the same curse that affects Koshki. I'm not sure if he's taking a look at Koshki or not, but he doesn't really look that great. Is he sure this is what he wants? For some reason, the guards that captured Ivan didn't bother to search him because he was packing some heat, which was a really good idea until he let Dabrinya put the stone in the sword, so now he's immortal. That's poor timing. Should have shot him earlier. The little dragon chose to make an entrance. He's still small. I really thought he'd get bigger too, Ivan. But hey, at least the fire breathing got more impressive. Ivan lets the others free and receives a nice slap from Vasilisa, which she definitely deserved. But I guess you could say he deserved what came next, too. Ivan thought it'd be a good idea to fight Dabrinya, or at least to stay alive long enough for someone else to break the stone and the sword. Not to be confused with the sword and the stone, like Excalibur. Now it's time for the ladies to duke it out. Let's go, Vasilisa. Dabrinya takes out his insecurities about Ilya on Ivan, having a flashback when Varvara killed him with his back turned. This chick has no integrity or rules, apparently. Don't know why Ivan talking crap to a guy who's beating him. Koshki has a stone now, but I can easily see him losing it in three, two, one. There it goes along with his forearm. Ivan gets to put on his lucky charm to use it one more time, and like that, Koshki and Dabrinya are dust. A little sad to see Koshki go, but we know that's what he wanted, right? And of course, Varvara gets away, but I'm sure we'll see her again sometime. Somehow, the statue of Ilya was actually him. That curse lifted as well. It looks like everyone is getting what they wanted in the end. Even the merman and Baba Yaga may get to have their uh, <clears throat> fun after all. So what's Ivan doing now? Looks like he's gonna use some magic for good this time. <laughs> Uh, gives me the feels a little. Looks like Vasilisa and Ivan gets a ride off into the sunset in their two-legged chicken cabin. Oh, okay. Didn't see that coming at all. Galena? Barbara? Sequel set up, anyone? And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for chilling with us on The Last Warrior. Produced by Walt Disney Pictures, Sony, and Yellow, Black, and White. It starred a cast that included Victor Korniak, Mila Sivatskaya, and Konstantin Lavrineko. So, do you think that the real Svetazar the Wizard got out of the mall jail? Go ahead and leave your answer with the hashtag Cinema Recap, and please, don't forget forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. As always guys, till next time.